have you ever pulled down a flight of stairs alone and in front of a crowd? How about walk straight into a glass wall you didn't quite realize was there? Well, I've experienced both of these events and more. I just may be one of the clumsiest people you will ever be. You name it, and I've probably endured it. I'm here this morning to narrate a few of my rather unfortunate events and experiences that have actually taught me invaluable lessons. Sometimes our most clumsy or unforeseen moments can teach us the greatest values and lessons that life has to offer. Notably, at the ripe age of eight years old, I was celebrating my aunt performing at her new beach home. Um, I arrived, I saw all my cousins, which I have plenty of, and was excited to be with family on a Saturday. The house itself was beautiful, modern design, but lots and lots of glass windows and sliding doors. You might see where this is headed. So later that evening, in and out arrived for dinner, and I joyously skipped, as any eight-year-old does, from the backyard to the dining room, where a glass sliding door separated the two. This glass sliding door had an automatic mechanism that it just closed right before I got in front of it. Um, and it was also non-tempered, which means that if you run through, or if you hit it hard enough, it'll shatter on you, which is what happened. So with two large lacerations across the right side of my face, I was rushed to the emergency room. Throughout my transport and subsequent arrival to the hospital, the medical professionals assigned to my care were thoughtful, compassionate, and like my family and I, in shock. From this experience, I saw firsthand how being compassionate and attentive to even the most minute details could have a profound impact on a life altering experience. For example, my surgeon, Dr. Jules, she fashioned the rose from my forehead to the You might be asking yourself, why would she take the time to do this? She took the time to see me for who I was, an eight-year-old fashionista who loved the details of any outfit, sequins, glitter, and in this case, a rose from wound dressing. Hmm. In addition, one of my EMTs following my procedure brought me a stuffed animal dog. Not only did he know that I loved dogs from my conversation in the ambulance, but he said that I needed companion during this time of recovery. And what better than man's best friend? Like Dr. Jules and my EMT, they showed both compassion and caring in these moments. The recovery I was faced with provided new challenges to both my academic schedule and extracurricular interests. I was proactive with my post-operative care and didn't let my healing requirements stop me from the goals I had set for that month. So, being proactive with my post-operative care, I wanted to get back in that classroom ASAP because I guess that first grade material was just too interesting to miss out on. In addition, I was persistent in practicing for my school's upcoming talent show. Right after a facial reconstruction or facial skin reconstruction um, and operation, I even performed the talent show I had I had planned for. My desire to party in the USA and got the whole school in the auditorium along with me, which is nice. This also provided an opportunity to build, for me to build confidence in asserting myself when the situation called for it. Flash forward to current times, in my first week here on the Pepperdine campus, I encountered yet again one of these accidents. I was up in my dorm room in a future FaceTime call for my cousin. Um, excited about my recent move here to Malibu and trying college life, I decided to take her with me um, to get lunch at the CAF on FaceTime. <laughs> Um, and show her what my home for the next four years looks like. I walked down Lower Rome Road, took a pause, and showed her the beautiful ocean view. Then I went on main campus grounds. At the top of the Addison Plaza stairs, I was looking down at my phone instead of where I should have been looking at the stairs, missed my steps, and tumbled the rest of the way down. Mm. From this point, you can probably tell I'm, again, very clumsy. <laughs> um, I had four deep scrapes cleaning and requiring dressing and covering. I think the problem solved um, because I needed to clean and cover the wound. I thought, okay, let's go to the nearest bathroom. And finding the nearest bathroom on campus I was still familiarizing myself with, I grabbed wet paper towels and began walking back up to my dorm, which I will know is the furthest of the freshman dorms in U Crown Alpha. With limited supplies in my personal first aid kit, I contacted my RA for additional help because it was a Sunday and the health center was unfortunately closed. Yet again, I chose resilience and fortitude. I chose to allot my, or I chose to adjust my schedule to 
um, accommodate time of the day for my dressing changes and to not allow it to affect my studies. In addition, I developed an allergic reaction because of the antibiotic appointment I used to this series of unfortunate events, which now required a doctor's appointment, which I also needed to allot time for. This healing process reinforced the values I learned following my accident as an eight-year-old. As shown above from the examples I've told you about, my accidents that I've experienced in my lifetime have been memorable to say the least and life altering at times, but also blessings in disguise. From these moments, I learned to be true to resilience, to come back stronger with the takeaways from each experience. From my accident as an eight year old, I observed values that are now integral to my life's purpose, how they come to everyone you encounter can shape your values and ultimately perspectives in life. From my infamous fall here on the Stepperton campus, um, I, my tenacity was challenged and I was able to prove my flexibility and own strength. Ultimately, I believe that resilience is not an innate or inborn quality. Rather, it is one that is shaped by the adversities we face and made stronger through life's challenges. 